Welcome to Idle Insights. I am joined by Lauren Urban, and hopefully I've done everything technically correct, which, well, who can say? If we're, if we're on Twitch right now, uh, let us know. <laughs> That's a great sign. I mean, I see us live. I can't listen to us for obvious reasons. For obvious um, reasons, yeah. I appreciate that my name is in larger font than yours. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Ooh, maybe that's your technical screw up is that the fonts are just different sizes. And hey, uh, that's the worst thing to happen today. Hit me up in the comments. I, yeah, I know. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Everyone in chat, tell us how much you like the font sizes. You know what? The show would be good, but the <laughs> font sizes are off. Ugh. <laughs> ah, kerning. Why kerning? Why kerning? Uh, oh, God. I was just thinking of a terrible character idea. Uh, or the scribes. Called kerning? Wi- no. Or the scribes wi- wizard called Lauren Ipsum. <laughs> Oh, Laura, for a second, I'm like, yeah. what? Not, not, mm. not Laura and Ipsum, though that's funny. That is kind of, I could play that character. <laughs> you, I could do that. You could play that character very, very And then, meta. yeah, you would have to, your counter spells would be, you'd have to screw up kerning. Yeah, you screw up the kerning on someone else's spell. Mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. I force you to cast that spell in Comic Sans. Oh, oof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would hate that wizard. <laughs> Well, well, we're, someone's playing that wizard now. Yeah, Either like, you're playing it or I'm playing it, and uh, one of us is DMing it. That, done. That's done. out in the world. I will. Mm-hmm. If I DM it, I will kill it. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I've I will got, show up to one of your games as that wizard, ready to die. I've gone full brutal. Uh, so yeah, what you got going on? You're an, uh, it's, it's, I'm there, planning on an order secret. of the scribes wizard yes. called Kerning, <laughs> called Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> Who is it? Epsom. Lauren. <laughs> Lauren Ipsum. Yeah. yeah it's, I, I, not much is going on. How you doing? That's a good Hitman title. <laughs> we don't hang out enough anymore. No, that's we true. Should, yeah. Even even if it is on stream. That's true. That's fair. <laughs> it's, it's all valid. I miss the chaos of us under our old shows of just like being, I don't know, let's just talk. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, you don't have to miss it. It's what we're doing right now. There's yeah. just a chat watching us. Hi, chat. The Lauren and Todd show. There you go. <laughs> done. Done. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Like, the, why can't this be a, a weekly occurrence? Uh, you can be permanently my Idle Insights co-host. That's I'm I'm down. I will be your Ed McMahon. <laughs> I think I think Chris Lindsay would have to be our Ed McMahon. <laughs> like, okay, only, all right. Only Listen. I would my Chris Lindsay from like a hundred feet away. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, with that laugh, I yeah. mean, yeah, Chris Lindsay is is the best Ed McMahon. Chris he's, Lindsay is just the best of us. He's the best. He's he's the best laugh because every time I go to a con, uh, I hear it <laughs> before I see him, <laughs> and then I can just find him, and it's just kind of like I don't know. It's like hearing a clock tower, but like mm. in a in a comforting way. <laughs> When I got a chance to play with him on a show, that was my favorite part of the show was figuring out. And I, I don't think it was just me, but everybody on the show was just figuring out how to make him laugh. Like that was oh, how yeah. you won D&D was, could you make Chris Lindsay laugh? Yes, I win. I win. I don't care what's going on with my character, but Lindsay's laughing. <laughs> That's the time where both Chris has got on me because I didn't, I, the last time I played in a game with him, uh, 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 Perkins was DMing and he told me, he told all of us. Don't press this button, and uh, mm-hmm. and like if, if you press this this one button, it rewinds time. If really don't press the other button, Lindsay was in that game, and so it's Chris. I didn't press the button. I was playing a character who would have pressed the button because that character in particular will always press the button, but I didn't. And then at the end of it, no one had pressed the button, and both Chris's looked at me like, "Why didn't you press the button? <laughs> it would have so made what, you the DM. That so was the plan." What we've learned is that Averin's kryptonite is Chris Perkins. Uh, it's because Todd's kryptonite is Todd is not Averin. Because <laughs> Todd is like, oh, I better not push that button, though. I, <laughs> as far as I know, that is the only time in the entire time you've played Averin and where you have... Averin has not done something because Todd was scared to. Yeah, I would say it usually goes the other way. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Averin is... Hmm, just impulse control, a lack of it. So, yeah, yeah. You tell Averin don't do something, and it's already been done. No, very accurate, very true. Uh, <laughs> it's like taking your skin off, or the king is dead. Um, already. So, well, why why continue on this adventure? I mean, uh, Orca could take her skin off if she really wanted to. It just take a while because it's like <sighs> scale it's by like scale molting. by scale. Yeah. 
<laughs> just that Listen, one, I have see, threatened... that's that make that canon where we just find husks of of like... It is. It is. I have Orkira has talked multiple times about molting. I just you have, have never haven't you? pulled the trigger and done it on on a stream. It's just always been something that's already happened or happened or is going to happen. Uh, because yes, I personally, as a DM, all of my dragonborn, cobalt, lizard folk, all those scaly creatures, they molt because how else do you replace scales that get lost? Um, how do you explain any of those scaly creatures that have scars? Well, if you look at, you know, not that reality is D and D, but yeah, like yeah. you can take inspiration from from it. And if you look at like snakes or other lizards and things, when they molt to replace broken and, and uh, injured body parts and scales, those scales often come back uh, a different color or mm. slightly off. You know, they don't come back perfectly. And so why not for also D&D uh, &D Dragonborn and Kobold? And, and so, yeah, on a regular basis, there was a whole moment in D4 in where I talked about how I was looking for a specific oil because I got a molt soon. And <laughs> it's not fun for anybody when that happens. <laughs> So yeah, you're a nice. You're. It's no secret you're in an upcoming show. Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm in a show called Idol Champions Presents Court of the Raven Queen. Or Kira finally gets dun, to. Dun. I finally get to round out the <laughs> Heroes of the Plains cast. I'm the last one to be in one of these, but hey, I get to I get to be with some awesome people, so I'm happy. So it is a court drama, right? We, Absolutely. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's uh, we're going to be we're taking the Raven Queen to court over wow um, you're taking okay yeah <laughs> Bold. well she's she has taken our friend's friend and our friend's part of his soul we're mm, not sure yeah. so yeah you know we're gonna show up um i'm definitely not the lawyer because uh, oh who would be the lawyer in that group i mean shaka's pretty smart i think shaka well, yeah, but he's 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 kind of he's the one on not on trial, but you know he's he's you know we want he's, he's got more than skin in the game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Bayloff is our lawyer. Bayloff uh, is a hundred percent our yeah. lawyer because he is smart and he is cunning and he will take the Raven Queen for all she's worth. Very good, Mark Mirror. Very good with Bayloff. Absolutely. Shadow sorcerers are a nightmare when you're play, playing them right. Uh, yeah. So how do you think? So I've known Orkira a long time. You have. You, uh, you've dealt with Orkira on multiple occasions. Orkira has dealt with things I've thrown at Orkira. So I feel like the Shadowfell may be like a walk in the park, but you hate undeath and negativity. Uh, and also negative energy. <laughs> but yeah. the Shadowfell has that in spades. Yeah, but she's with a bunch of people who also are not uh fond of any of that and um she knows I think a little Desmond's bit of... okay <laughs> I, I think i think we all know how to deal with it i think these yeah. are all characters who are especially at the the life experience that we're playing them as nothing is going to be brand brand new it's not like we're walking into the shadow fell and gonna go oh oh no i was not like we know <laughs> there's gonna be horrible things and surprises oh but my we know what... what happened why is it I, so dark here <laughs> i thought this was rainbows and ice cream so uh we all kind of know what to expect um orkira has now gone through a lot and so her her hatred of undead is is a very refined thing and is no longer <laughs> developed um, a refined palette for undead. <laughs> well, you know, when you hang out with a necromancer for a year and when you hang out with an undead for a year, yeah. when you you know. So she's I think the interesting thing with her, um, she has a very interesting opinion of the Raven Queen. She has not ever met the Raven Queen. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly uh, both Lauren and Orkira are kind of unsure about a lot of the specifics of her. But uh, Orkira has met people who are patron, who the Raven Queen is their patron. And what she knows about the Raven Queen kind of aligns with her own ethos in a bunch of different ways about how death is not the end of things, about how undeath is a really bad thing, especially like liches and evil creatures like that. Um, that being the matron of death is not evil, you know? And so yeah, I think- no, 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 yeah. I think or Orkira's going into this, like you joked about this being a courtroom drama, but Orkira's going into this really believing the hard part is getting to her. Like there's going to be battles and fights and horrible things that are going to happen in the Shadowfell. But then Orkira kind of believes once we get to the Raven Queen, we can reason with her. Like 
the Phoenix and the Raven Queen are on the same page. So I don't know if that's what's actually going to happen. Probably yeah. not, but it'll be fun. The Raven Queen canonically is always, I mean, it, it's always up to the Dungeon Master's interpretation, but I, I, I kind of, I know a lot about the Raven Queen. <laughs> <laughs> tangentially and uh, the interesting thing about her is that it's it could also depend on how b dave plays her exactly and that's he... that's the thing like because she's been represented differently in different editions um yeah. uh certainly in fifth edition m- my general sense of things uh and don't quote me on any of this is that she is fairly neutral and everything and I, I would say only a few steps away from like lady of pain area of just like I have a couple of rules. Yeah. <laughs> Don't break them. Well, and the the extra interesting thing is uh, there's the version of the Raven Queen that's like fifth edition Faerunian canon. And then there's right. uh, yeah. now that we've got Taldore that's been brought in through um, Critical Role, like there's that version of the Raven Queen who has a different kind of feel. And like there's a bunch of different ways that this can go. And that's, so I'm excited. Yeah, and that's a good thing that, that, that I have liked about the, I mean, the Raven Queen got done a, done a bad turn. So <laughs> historically. So yeah. uh, but I do like that. I always like it when these bigger than life entities are everything in the lore is not explained. I'm always happier. Um, it's it's just fun to see everyone's interpretation. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and it I, gives it gives you as the DM a lot more license with how you want things to go, and you can pick depending on what your players are doing. Like it, it's very possible because of who is going into on this mission the Raven Queen might react in very different ways to us, to what we have to say, to what we have to fight about, you know? So it could be very interesting. But yeah, Orkira herself is hopeful because uh, when she looks at the Raven Queen and she looks at the Phoenix and like the big major tenants, they kind of line up. Right. Yeah. But Yeah, for the most part, I can see mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So how do you think this group chemistry is going to be? And And this is all happening Monday. <laughs> it's happening Monday. Yeah, Monday is is episode one. Um, Lauren is super excited because I think all these players are absolutely fantastic. I have been wanting to play in a D&D game with several of them, uh, especially Sharif. Like, uh, this is canonically the first time Orkira gets to meet Shaka, but she has met all the other rivals of Waterdeep. So I'm excited for that. Um, I think Bayloth is the only one that Orkira knows. And playing with Mark is always fun. Um, and, and the, the rest, I mean, the whole group is, is pretty fantastic. Orkira is pretty easygoing. So unless, you know, I say, unless someone does something outright evil. <laughs> well, you're pretty and, easygoing unless what? <laughs> then, unless d and And, and even then, once again, um, yeah, yeah. her hard lines used to be all about undeath. And yet here right. she hung out with, uh, uh several undead. Uh, an undead warlock, a dampier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> On the D4 side, she hung out with a necromancer who was uh, bringing characters into undeath. That's a lot. Uh, there was a lot. There's a lot going on. So she, she's, but she's a pretty easygoing person in general. So um, it, it's not, for me, I'm not worried about how we're going to get along. I'm excited about some of the conversations that get to happen with these characters because um, these are new experiences for me as her. And I think a lot of these characters have really interesting things that have happened to them that uh, Orkira could learn from or impart wisdom to. And those are always exciting conversations. Yeah, there's always like an MCU element to it. I mean, I, <clears throat> I getting to play ever next to Bayloth was a little like Doctor Strange and Iron Man meeting. Like, it's yeah. like, these are both two sides of the same coin, <laughs> basically just hanging out. Um, so there's always those nice little fun chemistry moments you don't see coming so yeah. i also my favorite moment was uh from icp3 one of the funniest things was still um it was Whittle yelling at bailoff during the fight needlessly like i don't even yeah. remember what they were talking about it was a weird aside <laughs> just shouting during it during combat i found that well, very charming and that's that's half the fun right like we're, we're gonna be playing pretty powerful characters yeah I, 17th and level I, right uh yeah i don't know if that's been announced yet but there you go whoops <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not it's it's not that much of a surprise because this is happening yeah. after Trials of Mount Tiamat and the events of tri- I don't think you'll need to have watched Trials of Mount Tiamat uh knowing B Dave is going to give a really good recap 
um, yeah. all you need to know is what we're going off to do. But it is happening after that, and those were all pretty high-level characters. You don't send fifth-level characters into the Shadowfell, so yeah. Yeah, to the end, uh, what Orkira is this? Where in the timeline is this for Orkira? Because Orkira has had uh, been on multiple shows at the same time, has had an end. Uh, Several ends. Of, of, of a kind. Um, yeah. So where where do we find ourselves in this timeline? That is so, so everything that has aired that Orkira has been in uh, has happened except for the second half of the very last episode of Heroes of the Plains. So my understanding is this is happening directly after uh, Freely and Penelope get married. So everything Perfect. that happened in all of the shows, including D4, which also wrapped. So now that whole history of her is is enshrined. And she didn't die, <laughs> which is good. Because we, we had that in our back pocket of like, how do we get Orkira back from uh, D4 over to Beyond Heroes? Well, she might die. Um, but yes, so uh, basically the only thing that ha- will not have happened yet I, you figure I'd be used to that by now, but I'm not, is um, the wrap-up that happened at the end of Heroes of the Plains. So, yeah. But you're not going <clears> to <throat> need to really know any of that. If if all you know about Orkira is what's in the Idol Champions game, you're going to be fine. So she'll yeah. have the Phoenix, and she'll have a whole bunch of healing and fire. Yeah, I have a few questions from chat. We've got Lurking Rider, and it's this question, how long will this episode go for? I would like it to go for a full hour, because hearing the two of you together is... There's no more. There's nothing after is <laughs> in, I, my, in my in my document. <laughs> I appreciate that it is it all is. of the things. It, <laughs> that it is both the good and the bad. Well, yeah. I appreciate that. Todd and I have been friends for a long time, so yeah. We if there's an excuse for us to talk about D and T, yeah, it's, whether it's in front of people or not, we're we're happy to just do that. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Uh, it's not work. Uh, Luke McKay. I don't know. You might know that guy. Uh, ah, I'm familiar. Uh, with Orkira having a flying speed of fifty feet, would she know what is? To deal with airline food. <laughs> oh, you never want to eat and fly. That's uh, th- like you don't eat before you swim. You don't eat and fly. Don't fly and eat at the same time. First off, crumbs. You don't want to be, you know, leaving crumbs on people. Also, um, you're just going to get cramps in weird places, like in your tail. It's bad. Yeah, I feel like if you're a half man, half bat, they seem very tummy oriented. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I feel like birds kind of have it down in terms of like, okay, I've eaten my food, but I can still fly. Like, ravens seem to be fine. I've watched a raven just fly off with a giant biscuit <laughs> the size of my fist and just go into the sunset. Yeah. Well, but they're either <laughs> flying with it or they're birds who have that kind of digestion. I feel like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's you probably don't want to be eating while you're flying. I think you probably eat and then fly. I don't Unlike go- swimming. I don't but, even like going yeah. for a walk after I eat, so... <laughs> I know naps. <laughs> naps are nice. Post food naps are really nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, it, sometimes Megan will be like, "Do you want? Do you want to walk it off? Do you want to go for a walk?" I'm like we just ate pasta. <laughs> One of those. So in D four, uh, we we went on this big. It was a road trip, but there was a lot of walking. And because Orkira has this really fast fly speed, but she's only got 25 feet of walking speed, basically for the entire trip, what she's doing is like flying up into the air, keeping an eye on things, landing. And then as everyone's walking her along, because she's slower than everybody, she just ends up moving towards the back of the group. When she gets back to the group, she flies up, she takes a look around and comes back down. Yeah. And it got to the point in where I was just like, and she's up there like snacking. <laughs> Because, you know, what else are you going to do? It's these random things in D&D that I like thinking about. I mean, that's a good trail for someone else to follow you, though, with. <laughs> yeah, but if it's food, the chances of it being eaten. I mean, this yeah. isn't, th- this is not uh, Hansel and Gretel leaving breadcrumbs. This is Orkira Tra- eating um, trail rations. And if she's cast <laughs> create food and water, her food tastes like uh, vaguely like lobster. So That's nice. I like lobster. Yeah. Yeah. Vaguely like lobster, though. Vaguely, vaguely like lobster. Vaguely, yes. Six years in a bag with Harold, you can only get it vaguely like lobster. After playing a character for three years, uh, is there, is it harder to make new characters with the expectation of them being long term? Because who? <laughs> because like mm. one shots, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna make a silly guy who eats people. Okay, yeah. but then someone's like, well, this may be going on for three years. Then I'm like, oh. <laughs> No, because uh, new characters for me, my what helps a lot when creating a new character is having constraints. 
And usually I'm the player who waits for everybody else to make their character and then makes their character because I'll look. And that's how Orkira came to be, literally. Like the reason I was a cleric is because we were making all of our characters and I went, oh, there's no healing. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what I like is seeing what's already out there and finding what are the gaps. And it's less about an optimized build and more of like, okay, what don't we have? Mm -hmm. What can I bring to the table that we don't already have? Oh, we've already got a intelligence-based character. We've already got a, a couple of, of melee characters and we've already got, um, you've already got a druid. So let's go something charismatic. Um, so making a new long-term character just adds the, who is also not a dragonborn or a cleric. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I'm trying, yeah. like, yeah. like, especially now, I'm still kind of playing Orkira. You yeah. know, I've got ICP3, and then, you know, she might show up on a one-shot or two. So I'd like my next long-term character to not get that direct comparison. So um, it, it's in a weird way a little easier because now I have a... A larger collection of don't do this so that I have something new to try. Yeah, like I, I, I've had very lengthy conversations currently of like, what is not this character? What's the opposite? Yeah. And like, it, you don't have to go opposite though, but there is a tendency to kind of want to, especially if you've been kind of in this space for a very long time acting wise. Yeah. You kind of need a break. Yeah. Uh, um, so or. I, I, me personally, I'm like, I'm probably going to go pretty lawful on shit. <laughs> or <laughs> like, what you find is like, okay, these are the things I absolutely don't want to do again. Oh, and yeah. then here's are the, the things that I really had a lot of fun with that I'm okay if they're still in this character. Like, I, it became kind of a joke. But when Orkira took Observant and her her passive perception went through the roof and it got ridiculous – I really enjoyed that. And so if I end up playing another character that has a really good perception, like that was a lot of fun to me. And I can just come up with different reasons for that. But no, I won't play another, at least my next character will not be another Dragonborn, will not be another cleric. Um, but if it ends up being like wisdom based or if I end up, I, I probably won't have any healing just so that I get away from the being of a, uh, being the healer mentality. But like, yeah, yeah. if I have some of the spell crossovers, that's fine. Because some of these spells I find really fun. If I end up having some uh, crossover because these were things in the game that I enjoy, uh, then then that's okay. So it doesn't have to be, because uh, honestly, what's the exact opposite of Orkira is I need to be like a necromancer wizard who's evil. And that is not really my jam. <laughs> yeah, that's the, th that's the interesting thing. Like, I... I actually do quite like evil, but for the sake of the party. Like, I've always found that those moments in television and, and novels to be interesting. Yeah. Where someone's doing evil for the greater good. I have not ever done that on a live stream necessarily, except for maybe Mero. Um, but that was I... without any kind of context of intelligence. That was, <laughs> like, but, like, yeah. I used to play a character that would be like, okay, well, this king is very evil. I'm going to kill that when I was 18, a version of the character that I recently played. But those two characters are very different. One was very pragmatic, like, okay, this guy's a problem. I'm just poisoned him. Yeah. <laughs> we are now able to move on as a party. His best friend was a paladin. <laughs> like, like it was, and I miss that chemistry of like, I'm obviously terrible, but it's a group and everyone gets along and everyone's and accepting of that. That's the key. I have not played an evil, I ran an evil campaign back in fourth edition and I've played in a campaign with where one of the characters was evil. And it takes a lot of trusting the other players at the table. And it takes a lot of checking in mm -hmm. in order for it to go well. And you, like you said, you have to play evil in a very specific way. Yeah. Like almost. Because and then it's just not fun for anybody. Yeah. Like it. I mean, I think you just have to kind of know. I mean, again, like when. When I'm talking about like an evil like that, like we knew that that character was evil, like that bad king. <laughs> yeah. Not killing other good NPCs, even. Like just having a very loose moral compass that is still very focused on the greater good and makes everyone uncomfortable as characters, but not as players. Like no one wants to play with someone who's just like murdering bunnies. Um, that kind of evil is not fun at all. 
<laughs> or going behind your back to like, hey, you know, we've decided as a group that we're not going to do this thing. And then you go away and then that character goes back and does the thing anyway. Like you. Yeah. yeah, they're, they're, yeah. The non, they're still non antagonistic. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. but no, evil to me is it's not yet something that sounds like fun unless it's an all evil party. And then even then, like. Again, I exploded enough once. I've never been happier. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, I, it makes me laugh. <laughs> I I know, I know, but like I still enjoy the sitting down and being friends with other characters. Oh yeah, no, that was an NPC. That again, that was yeah. an NPC. But that, that that kind of absurdity that you very rarely get in Dean. I think this is why the Suicide Squad is doing so well and things like Peacemaker is that you have this kind of darker, edgier, and uh, I don't even know if um, I mean it's such an overused term. Because they're still heroic characters, but like I don't. Why am I the anti-hero? Anti-hero. Yeah, it's always. Yeah. It's. I think it's heavily, heavily, heavily overused because it sounds like this person is also like, oh, I don't want to be the hero. But like, I like the idea of a hero who goes about thinking that they are good. <laughs> I think paladins are kind of dangerously in that zone. Well, I think the other thing you have to remember: Orkira considers herself an anti-hero because she doesn't consider herself a hero. Oh, she's the right. Yeah, okay. You know, and so sometimes, and I know this is like a bad example, but like thinking about how you can be a character who is with a group of people who wants to help them out, but isn't necessarily thinking I'm doing it to go be heroic. Yeah, um, yeah. is another way because whenever anyone ever asked or Kira's, I'm not the hero. These are the heroes. My job is to help them. Right, right, right. You know, and so coming up with those reasons why I want to hang out with these people. And maybe that's just me because one of the other things I really uh, glob onto with D and D is that found family aesthetic is, is a very strong motivator for me to want to play right. and found family. You can, you can have an asshole in your family, but you, your asshole can only be an asshole in certain ways right. <laughs> be- before the family disowns them. So, right, right, right. Yeah, that's accurate. Um, but once again, it's like as long as you're you're all having fun and everybody's talking ahead of time, you know, then it all works out. It's, the, it's what the your working party writer needs. has just said that Lauren's next character is going to be a family of kobold bakers. Sure. Uh, no comment <laughs> because uh, this is this is a long term thing. Yeah, I, I have a family of kobold bakers in my back pocket. <laughs> That's excellent. You should. Yeah, yeah. You know what, lurking writer. Um, when it happens, you'll know. <laughs> so upsetting no 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 it's true it's true it's absolutely true uh yeah i am to be determined i am at the whims of the future <laughs> so I'm, i have no idea i literally have no idea well i mean it, we've already talked about on demi plane how we're going to finish up the strict saving campaign and then there's another thing that's coming that's going to be another long-term campaign we haven't given any details yet but um the me working on another character is not just an esoteric idea. Right. Uh, but you will have to wait for more announcements there. But we're here to talk about Orkira and uh, Idol Champions Presents. Unless you want to talk about Moondance. Unless uh, you want to talk about... You tell me about Moondance for those that do not know at this point. Is that possible? So, oh, <laughs> well, I hope I hope not. I hope everybody in chat has bought Disco the Baby Moonstone Dragon for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I ran a one-shot last week when we released the, the familiar... For a couple people who work here at the company, a couple wonderful people, and Brian Gray, who is Urban Bohemian on uh, Twitch, who helped create Disco. And it's a charity fundraiser for the Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, And if you make the purchase before February 22nd, all of the net proceeds will go towards the Canadian Cancer Society, which is a wonderful organization. And it is the, the most adorable. It is the most adorable familiar. So I ran a whole one shot that was based in uh, a Moonstone Dragon's dream. It was their 999th birthday party mm-hmm. and they needed bouncers because you know what? Sometimes when you're 999 years old, you make some enemies and people want to come and ruin your dreams. <laughs> it's true. So you hire so you hire a bunch of adventurers to hang out in your dream and make sure that, that things don't go wrong. And, and when- It's like Inception. When, a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> uh, except except uh, with more carnival games and dancing and an endless buffet. That because sounds... if you if you have me run a game, there I will, will make a... all of food your food is always dreams. Centric. Yeah. Food dreams will come true. <laughs> yes, 
Perfect. All of your food dreams. There was a pie eating contest, uh, but there there was there was uh, the threat of the dream getting ruined. And you know what? When dreams turn into nightmares, it can get bad. That's, so yeah, that's true. That's up on our uh, YouTube channel, and you can go watch that and see us having two hours worth of fun in a dreamscape, um, making all of the dancing puns. I still have a list of fifty different song titles that have moon in them. We we got through like ten. <laughs> I can only work in ten. Yeah, I'm can't, so can't. upset. Yeah, you're just gonna have to. You're just gonna have to just stand there. And list I had them a all lizard folk a, band <laughs> ready to just play all the moon moon songs. Perfect. Bare naked li- lizards were right no, there. Boo. Yes. Boo. Yes. All right. It was great. Well, that, that's our idle insights, everybody. That's, that's Lauren it. Urban. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Check I out. I feel like I feel like we didn't. How did this already end? Did this it, is not fair. I'm, I'm sorry. Isle, Isle Champion presents the three. Core of the Raven Queen. Don't, don't. Ice T needs to show up. Uh, uh, is going to happen on Monday <laughs> at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. on this channel. Come and join this, us. This Come channel you're watching here, us disaster folk. <laughs> on. We're, I, we are not a disaster. We are lovely. I, I, I will accept that. So uh, mm, thank good. you, everyone in, everyone in chat. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a great day. Bye.